guys, it's Kate from Air and Space and welcome to Antiques Deep Dive Part 4. Today I'd like to talk to you about silhouettes. So what is a silhouette? A silhouette is a paper craft art form in which you cut out the outline of a person, a figure, sometimes a group of people, and you apply it to a second piece of paper, typically black on white or white on black, which was slightly less common. Um, and silhouettes were made between about 1750 and are still made today. Uh, they have, the name silhouette has kind of a funny origin, which is uh, as they became popular in France in the mid 18th century, um, they were at first called shadows um, and they became <laughs> silhouettes because the uh, French minister of finance at the time was a fellow named Etienne a la silhouette or de silhouette. And um, he was considered to be uh, quite the penny pincher and was very unpopular. And so the phrase a la silhouette uh, began to be used to refer to anything that was cheap or um, low budget, uh, cutting corners to save money. Uh, and silhouettes were considered to be a cheap art form because they're essentially a step down from a portrait miniature, which would have been a small hand painted picture of a person that you might carry around with yourself because of course this was in the time before pho photographs. So um, the name stuck and so now they've been called silhouettes as kind of a shade to this poor guy for the last 200 and some odd years. Um, silhouettes became increasingly popular in uh, the last quarter of the 18th century. You don't see a lot of American silhouettes that date to before about 1785. Um, and by the beginning of the 19th century, they were extremely common. Most middle class people had silhouettes cut at some time in their lives. So silhouette artists were what we call itinerant for the most part. And an itinerant artist would travel from town to town to town to draw, uh, drum up business and um, get new clients. Because if you just stayed stationary in one town, you'd probably run out of clients fairly quickly. So they would announce that they were in town, say that they were staying in you know, this inn or this lodging house and would be taking commissions to cut silhouettes. Um, one of my favorite itinerant silhouette artists of the early 19th century is a gal named Martha Ann Honeywell. And Martha was born without forearms, um, but she was extremely clever and industrious and uh, taught herself how to cut silhouettes with scissors in her mouth and with her toes. Uh, she also would do penmanship and various other kind of fine handicrafts. And she traveled up and down the East Coast. She was born in 1786 and died in 1856, lived a, a long and colorful life and um, she would she would cut these silhouettes and you can still find some I've actually seen examples in person and they're pretty good uh, and they always have a little inscription that she wrote on the bottom that said cut cut with the mouth by Martha Ann Honeywell um, so they're they're incredible and she was a, a really neat woman and worth worth looking up because she's got a whole history um, so these these silhouettes here these are the ones that i'm going to be um, talking about for the most part today and i found these last summer at an antique shop in salem connecticut for ten dollars for the pair silhouettes for the most part are not terribly expensive except for the very very finest ones so it's a really good interesting way to begin a collection and so many of them have incredible personal stories including these and I probably would have bought them for $10 for the pair regardless, but when I got to the cash register, I realized, and it was just one of those wonderful, amazing antiques moments, that one of them has an inscription on the reverse. And I'm gonna hold this up to the camera, so bear with me, so that you can see, you might not be able to read, but you can probably see, there we go. And that is a 19th century ink inscription that's been applied to the original backboard of the frame. And that says, Amanda A. Gates died March 15, 1839, aged 19 years, buried in Lakeview Cemetery, East Hampton, Connecticut. And of course, I am here filming from East Hampton, Connecticut, and I drive by Lakeview Cemetery every day. Um, so Amanda's story is a very poignant one, and I think it's one that's very relatable to us, especially right now during this pandemic. Um, Amanda died at 19 and actually her sister Julia Ann died, um, Amanda died on March 15th and Julia Ann, who was 17 years old, died March 28th of 1839. So in very quick succession for very young people. And we ask ourselves now, looking back, well, what, what could have caused that two young girls to die suddenly in their prime in such a short period of time? And it almost certainly was an infectious disease. 
Uh, and we can't know for sure because I have looked up their, um, their records and it does not give a cause of death, but we can assume it was an infectious disease. It could have been diphtheria, it could have been cholera, it could have been viral meningitis, but I am willing to bet that it was tuberculosis. And tubercu tuberculosis is a bacterial airborne infectious disease um, and it causes a deterioration of the lungs. And it was so common by the mid 19th century because they didn't really know how to fix it. They didn't have a vaccine. They didn't know what to do to prevent it, which of course now we know a lot more, um, all of us about how to prevent airborne diseases now, but um, it, it killed people in just vast, vast quantities to the degree that the appearance of a person who had tuberculosis, and it often was young people, became romanticized. So this ideal of a woman with very, very pale skin um, and very flushed cheeks, which of course was caused by the fever that she was suffering. And in the 19th century, it was called consumption because you would literally look like something was consuming you, eating you away, and you would lose a lot of weight. So this very, very thin form um, and these very kind of dark eyes became the ideal of beauty for women. And it was because tuberculosis was so common. It was like the heroin chic of the 19th century. So good chance that that's what happened to both Julia Ann and Amanda. Um, they were the daughters of Major Olmsted Gates and uh, Abigail Young, who went by Nabby, which is a wonderful nickname. And uh, Nabby had a pretty hard uh, decade between 1839 and 1849 because by the 1850 census, I can see that she's lost another child and her husband, Major Olmsted Gates. And so in the 1850 census, she's living with her remaining two children. Uh, so it was definitely a, a hard and difficult time. And um, I have visited their gravestones and I have left flowers. Um, and so I think, you know, it's, it's a legacy this, this story that's attached, which we call a provenance, the story that's attached to an antique, and this is kind of an incredible personal one, both because it's from my town and because they were so young and had to go through such a hardship. Um, so about these silhouettes specifically as a form, these are, um, and I should say, I suspect, because the second silhouette, which I'm gonna hold up a little more closely, you can see there, I suspect that's Julia, though she's not ID'd on the reverse, but the fact that they are almost certainly done by the same artist and at the same time, these were probably done as memorial silhouettes um, after the girls passed. And the other reason I believe that to be the case is they're very naive. And we use the term naive when uh, discussing uh, fine arts to describe a piece that's done by a person that we can tell that they haven't had formal training, which some silhouettes are absolutely incredible and they are just impressive, detailed works of art. And these are so homespun and simple and I think probably done by possibly Nabby herself or someone else in the Gates or Young family um, as, as, as a memory of these girls. And of course, at the time, this is all that they would have had to remember the girls by because Photography doesn't become widely available in America until about the following year, right around 1839 to 1840 is when we first see daguerreotypes being used as um, the way to then have an image of the person that you care about or that perhaps has passed away. And uh, interestingly, the introduction of uh, mass mass-produced, mass-marketed photography in America is what ends the silhouette craze of the 19th century. Um, so they become far less popular after about 1840. Um, so then they become popular again during the colonial revival in the 1920s when people became really fascinated with um, early American forms. Um, and so these are a lovely pair that I scored for a dollar each just a few days ago, and they are dated 1945. And they are also paper cut silhouettes. Um, what's interesting about them is I cannot tell if they're a pair of brothers or if it's the same silhouette twice because they are very, very similar. But they're quite handsome and it's nice to see together, you know, how, how this form kind of has varied. Um, so with silhouettes, uh, it's always with all the antiques, a question of how to determine how old it is. People are still making silhouettes today. In fact, my parents had uh, a silhouette of myself and my brother cut on um, Main Street USA in Disney World when I was about four and somewhere at my parents' house, those are still floating around. 
when we're when we're evaluating a silhouette there's a lot of factors that we're going to look at in terms of determining age first off is that these are the original frames on all of these and so almost exactly a hundred years difference and you can see the, the 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 differences in aesthetic and how clearly these are these are older frames you can see that there's a lot more oxidation on the wood here and a lot more crackalure on this frame oxidation being the woods aging process as it's exposed to oxygen over the course of hundreds of years crackalore being the way that the paint that's been applied to a wood surface begins to separate from it and create this kind of alligatoring effect now these are mass produced very humble wood frames um, and you can I mean they're not at all really different than what we see being sold even today in St. Michael's um, another thing that we look at is the aging of the paper which um, paper as it's exposed even with behind glass it's going to be exposed to a lot of particulates uh, and pollutants in a home as they were heating with wood stoves and um, open wood fireplaces and lots of people were smoking so there's going to be a lot of particles in the air that are going to age the paper um, so this paper you can see is quite a bit older looking and has a lot more uh, foxing than the paper on these. And um, finally, a way that we can um, determine the age is based on the clothing that the people are wearing, which this boy is wearing kind of a sweet, what you'd expect, like little boy suit, almost a variation on a sailor suit. And these gals are reflecting, though it's very humble, we can see that they are reflecting the styles of the late 1830s. So, um, Amanda has a wonderful tortoiseshell hair comb in her hair here that you can just see sticking up, which these tortoiseshell hair combs, and they were just like all the rage then, and they're about that big, and they'd put them in their hair, and they'd have these big elaborate buns. Um, and she's also got this nice high collar here, and we could assume that she's got a tight sleeve with a low arm side and probably a deep V and a big full skirt. Um, and her sister's also probably got a hair comb. It's a little bit harder to see there, but I'm guessing that swoop there is meant to be a hair comb as well. So again, silhouettes are a wonderful place to begin a collection. Um, my mother collects silhouettes on a very, very big level, and we'll revisit her collection once things open back up. Um, but um, she uh, gets most of them for under $100, and many of them are extremely impressive and tell amazing stories, just like the story that we have attached to the Gates sister silhouettes here. So I hope this was informative. Thank you for tuning in. There will be lots more to come, and uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.